Dr. Montessori took very seriously this notion of the best conditions for development. When she designed the prepared environment, she looked closely at the developmental needs of the child at the age of two and a half to six, and she determined that the prepared environment needed to have some very specific characteristics. The first is beauty. Beauty should be at the core of any design and arrangement of any prepared environment for children. We want artwork hung low at the child's eye height, light colored shelves, a harmony in the arrangement of the furniture. It would be nice if there were windows that were low enough for the child to see out of. Beauty is the center of our environment. We want these to be inviting for the child with good quality furniture. It doesn't have to be expensive, just good quality. We want the child to be able to come in, feel safe, and feel excited like they have arrived at a place just for them. Another characteristic of the prepared environment is ample space. We have maybe 26 children in a classroom. We have shelving, we have tables, chairs, and then work rugs that will be on the floor. We need to make sure we have enough space for all of this, especially walking on the line. We don't want that to be covered by rugs. So think of the arrangement of the classroom and then the movement of the children within it. Let's talk about the next, which is child-sized. Dr. Montessori was the first person to use child-sized furniture in an environment like this. And what she realized was that when she used child-sized items and furniture, the child could act in the environment and the environment could respond to them. So think of child-sized tables, chairs, shelves, utensils. Think of the strength of the child when you are creating your exercises. They can't be too heavy. When we use this notion of child-sized items, we are removing an enormous obstacle for the child in their independence. They will be able to navigate freely in the classroom. It's going to build self-confidence. A practical note about tables and chairs. When you think of how many you need, you're going to need a chair for every child in the classroom, but you're only going to need half as many tables as you have children. This way you can pair up children when they sit for lunch and everyone will have a space. The Montessori prepared environment is based in reality. And this is the reason why we encourage classrooms to have hard floors. Hard floors allow for natural consequences. If we aren't careful pushing in a chair, we're going to hear a noise of the wood scraping on the hard floor. If we're not careful carrying a tray with a fragile item, it's going to break. This is natural consequences and is wonderful feedback for learning. We will have children that come in and engage in fantasy play with the materials. This is something that we do want to stop and redirect the energy. We connect the child to reality because reality is what the child understands. This is where they need to be, working with their hands, with real objects, working on real tasks that have a purpose. Nature is another element of that connection to reality. We want to bring in as much of the outdoor world inside as we can. I encourage you to include plants, many plants of different sizes, of different types. Consult your local child care authority to make sure you know which plants are safe to be in the classroom, of course. But don't be afraid to have large plants. These are great opportunities for the children to care for the leaves and tend to the plants. It should be their job to water them too. This builds that sense of responsibility. And sense of responsibility is also constructed when we have classroom pets. Classroom pets are a lot of fun. They can be a fish or a guinea pig. Again, consult your local child care authority so you know what's appropriate to have in your classroom, but allow the children a role in caring for that pet. 
Like I said, it builds responsibility, but it also develops compassion and empathy. If you're lucky enough to have the space, create an outdoor environment with activities that are specific to be done outside, like filling the bird feeders. Children can bring inside work outside, or they can choose to work on those very special outside activities. Dr. Montessori noticed that children had an interest in gardening. If you can put together some simple garden boxes, that is such a great experience for them to prepare the soil and plant the seeds, to tend the seedlings, and hopefully at the end they get to harvest whatever they grew. Structure and order is a large characteristic of the prepared environment, and it surrounds the child all the way from our three-hour uninterrupted work cycle to the unchanging arrangement of the items on the shelves and the shelves themselves. We have an order and progression that we offer the children with exercises from simple to more complex, from concrete to abstract. This is important because we have children that are passing through a sensitive period for order.